Hello. So we will be back in two minutes for EP is New York. Uh, so in two minutes, we'll go back for the presentation. I just wanted to uh, feature the poll section on the top right of your uh, screen. You may see a chat, a polls, and people section. So don't hesitate to answer to polls. They're for the first, they're funny. And the second, and the second thing, uh, yeah, they help us also to get a sense of what the community is, is thinking about the current space. So for example, the first one, the first poll we, we, we've asked was most was actually a, a question, a, a general culture question about like, uh, uh, to your mind, when is the first, when the first time the term EPI was coined, like application programming interface, was it in 1951? Uh, was it in 1968, was it in 1979, or was it in 2017, right? So the majority of people now thinks it was mostly in 1979, in the deal between Microsoft and IBM, right? Uh, and actually, we have 25% who think it was 1968, and 25% who think this was 1951, at the creation of EDSAC, kind of the first kind of big computer. Uh, yeah, so I'll let you, I'll let you continue to answer uh, these polls, uh, and during the day we'll try either give the answer or just come on these polls together. But now, uh, now it's it's time to go back for uh, uh, the, the content, and we're really glad uh, to have our, our next speaker uh, who will tell us a lot more about uh, um, uh, mastering APIs for making companies like understanding the API mindset and evolve, especially in the. Uh, banking, finance, and finance and payment industry, and this person is Sina Ganesh from uh, Visa. She's a senior director at the uh, uh, Visa Developer Platform, and I will ask uh, Sina to come on stage, right, with our ceremonial, uh, which is like it's like coming on stage in the real world, but uh, now it's uh, uh, like a virtual. So, can we send uh, Sina on, on stage, please? Hello, Sina, how are you? Hi, I'm doing great. Yeah, perfect. Can you share with this, your screen with attendees? Yeah, I am. One, okay. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah, we're able to see your screen. Uh, the stage is yours for 25 minutes, including the questions. Yeah, good sure. luck. Okay, no problem, thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. And uh, I'm Sina Ganesh, I'm Senior Director at Visa. Uh, I head client engagement and client solutions team uh, at a global basis at Visa. And in that role, uh, uh, my team interacts with financial institutes, uh, institutions, fintechs, and find out what, uh, how APIs can be applied for some of the problems they are trying to solve. So with that, uh, let me uh, go to the main content. So I want to open this discussion uh, or this presentation with um, our own journey, like Visa's uh, journey from a closed network to a more of an open network. So Visa has been an API company from the beginning. For example, we when we started, we um, used remote procedure calls, we used SOAP APIs, all that was already existing. But what was missing is we were very product focused and APIs were um, for one specific product or specific products in the pipeline. Um, what was missing is we were not able to provide an end-to-end -end experience uh, to the clients, right? So when clients ask for a solution, they're asking for an end-to-end -end experience and multiple products can be applied to that experience. And what was missing is to provide that view of um, the end-to-end -end experience that our clients and partners can bring in, bring to uh, their end customers. So we moved from more of a product-focused uh, approach to a solution-focused approach, and I'll talk about that in a in a in a bit. So what it enabled basically is digital transformation, taking the product to market quickly, and also enhanced uh, customer experience. So. We had uh, we moved away from old API standards to industry standards, REST-based, JSON-based industry standards, and we continue to evolve to provide that omni-channel customer experience using our APIs. So this is the start of our journey uh, of transformation. So what we have learned, so I'm, I'm going to talk about our learning mostly in this presentation. So when we think about APIs, um, 
for whatever products that we have, it's very important to understand the end customer needs. So when you, uh, for example, we are a card network company. So when we ask, we don't directly interact with the card holder. Uh, that the card is provided by the financial institution. So when you talk to an end customer, they're not going to talk specifically about a product. They're going to talk about what experience they want. So the cardholder might say, you know, I want my digital card issued to me right away. I want to receive transaction alerts. I want to get transaction details. I don't want to call customer support and get the issue resolved. I want banking app to help me resolve my issues without being on the phone. How can I reduce my disputes? So this is the language your end customer will talk to. In, in our world, the end customer will talk to. Um, and it's very important to uh, visualize the experience, the, the digital experience they need. And what we found was in this very competing field of financial services, um, the customer is really looking for an uh, enhanced digital experience. They want uh, the mobile app to be able to solve whatever um, assistance they need in terms of financial services. So that's a big learning for us. And also, um, when we think about our uh, space, we are a networking company, right? We are a card network company, and we don't directly um, interact with the cardholder, but we, we usually uh, do that through our partners and collaborators. For example, for card issuance, we work with our issuing banks. For card acceptance, we work with acquirer banks and merchants. And there are tons of independent developers and fintechs out there who really is enabling a lot of these services for all these partners. So it's an ecosystem that we need to uh, develop, collaborate, and innovate with. And that's a very important aspect while building the API. When you build an API for a product, it's important to see who is going to consume it. And it can be several uh, players in the ecosystem. It won't be just one type of customer. It won't be just a quarterbacks. It won't be just issuing banks. It will be uh, tons of fintechs who want to enable all these things. So it's very important to think from a different type of partners who wants to use your product. So what we found was um, in this, all these different collaborators and partners um, wanted to do different things. Some of them wanted to uh, issue digital wallet. Some are very much experts in banking um, software, uh, alternative lending, vendor payments, disbursement, you call it, right? So now the thing is we have different partners who are focused on specific aspects of the financial services. And then you are you have end customer who is asking for an end to an experience and doesn't care how many partners are collaborating to make that experience possible for them. So that's a very interesting thing for us. And um, and to the next slide. So it's very important when you're thinking about a product and thinking about exposing that product as APIs, visualize the end to end customer journey, right? For example that I have given here, fund transfer experience. That's a whole uh, experience. Small business travel experience, accounts payable experience, and also small uh, use cases like turning card on and off, which is very important for a cardholder, keeping the card as top of wallet, which is a very specific use case. So it's important to understand the big picture and also focus on specific experience in that big picture that your customer is trying to achieve. So uh, from all these learning, what we have done is like we have several products. We have around um, 60 plus products available as APIs today on our developer platform, developer.visa.com. And uh, we have uh, more than 100 APIs um, uh, available uh, and exposed in that website. Now, the question is, how do you categorize it so that people who are looking for uh, the appropriate products can find those products, apply it, figure out what can they do using those products? So this is just an example of how we have categorized it and, uh, you know, in our space, but it could be different for uh, different uh, use cases and different industries. So uh, we have um, APIs related to payment methods, uh, uh, improving the security, um, commercial cards, data and analytics, offers and benefits, digital processing, which are 
primarily uh, primary categories that um, our customers are looking for um, specific solutions in. So, uh, so now Visa uh, rebuilt their developer uh, portal in uh, around 2016. We relaunched it, um, and that journey was amazing for us. We learned a lot while going through that process. So, if you are building a product and you are thinking about commercializing that product, um, you know, taking it to um, API, exposing APIs for your products. Um, it's important to consider having a, a developer portal user experience and uh, a place where your uh, users can come and uh, look at different products that are available as APIs, look at uh, experiences that they can build. It's important to showcase that experience and then say, okay, in this experience, these are the different APIs that will apply. And I, I will talk about that in a bit. And also, it's important to understand um, API standards. And uh, why API standards is important? Because um, as I mentioned, uh, when you start with an experience, in the same experience, there could be multiple products that you may want to use. And when you are mashing up those multiple products using their APIs, it's important. Interoperability between the APIs is very important. And if your APIs are not interoperable, then uh, your clients will will really struggle to um, uh, to mash up those APIs and build an experience out of it. So um, it's important to have that API standard and make sure that um, your APIs work with multiple. Uh, configurations. For example, um, we need to support the PAN-based uh, APIs, uh, which is PAN is the 16-digit uh, uh, card number, and also token, digital token-based API. So every API should um, ideally have uh, support for a 16-digit card number and um, also support for the digital token. Uh, only then it will be completely interoperable. And then it's important to give a testing environment and sufficient tools that they can use to uh, build their application. So our developer portal um, sub, uh, supports uh, developers to come and uh, log in and uh, connect within a few minutes and then test their applications using our APIs. And also sufficient testing tools so that they can uh, build that experience uh, free of charge using the sandbox environment. And once that experience is built, uh, they can then uh, request for access and take it to production. Now, why are we doing all these for? You know, definitely uh, there should be a business model and a revenue model for your APIs. Like how are you, how is a company going to make money um, out of APIs? And it could be a subscription-based model or a specific product-based uh, pricing model. Mm. And then operating model is also very important. Like once uh, your client wants this API tested and everything is fine, they want to take it to production. How quickly can you turn them on in production? So you need to have a very um, a st a streamlined process to provide them auth uh, authorization and take them, give them access to the actual production APIs. Um, and last, not but not least, um, having a vibrant developer community is very important because developer community helps um, people to collaborate and learn from each other. And uh, that's a good way of sharing knowledge and helping others build something very innovative. So these, these were our learnings, and uh, I thought it would be a good idea to share, uh, share what we have learned um, while thinking about a product and thinking about how you want to expose your product as APIs. So now uh, I talked a lot about uh, our products and how we expose it as APIs. Now, um, that's not sufficient, right? You need to be able to collaborate with your clients and show them how they can build some of these products um, uh, uh, they can use some of these products and build solutions out of it. So we just uh, follow a simple five-step process to um, to uh, make it happen for our clients, which is explore what their use cases are, define and prioritize their business opportunities, and then uh, identify which API they can use, help them prototype it, um, and then build it in the test environment, and then use a streamlined process to launch it. 
So a simple five-step process uh, is something that you should think about when you you want to evangelize your APIs and take it to your clients and help clients use your product APIs. So here is a simple example, and this is not a very complex example. Like how how do we go through this process? Um, in in this slide, I'm just uh, I'm just uh, sharing a scenario where uh, where a cardholder lost her card. And what is she? Uh, how she? What kind of experience will she uh, require in such an environment? And uh, that's where human-centered design methodology is very helpful. So in this case, Nicole lost her card. What will she do? Yeah, she's going to suspend the card. Card found, and she will enable the card. Um, John lost his card. What is he going to do? And that could be the same or a different experience. So it's very important to think from different personas and find out what is the experience that they would want in a specific scenario, and then think about APIs. Because um, in this experience, you may require Visa APIs. You may require other APIs as well. So uh, it's good to start with an experience uh, and work through the personas, find out what is the optimal experience that you want to provide, and then figure out which APIs you want and how to um, how to use that, uh, integrate with those APIs and take your product to production. So here, it's a very high level process, and this is all available in the developer portal, uh, Visa developer portal. Um, so uh, like I mentioned, it's important to uh, define the end-to-end -end experience, pick the right API, and then what do you do, right? You pick the right API, you are going through a development cycle, register and getting access to the platform, building using your sandbox, and then maybe you know take it to your management, get uh, permission to launch this into production. So um, the environment really helps a quick and easy, innovative way of uh, development. And then it's important to uh, understand the security aspects of your connectivity. Like what is the right authentication scheme that you want to use? Um, you, do you want to use uh, two-way mutual uh, SSL authentication? And uh, what is the data security scheme? Like how do you want to transfer the data? Do you want to encrypt the data? Is the PII involved? is the PCI compliance. So it's very important to think about all those things so that you're protecting your customer's data. And then write access, right? Are you going to uh, do a, a synchronous call or a synchronous method of accessing the API is also important. How much data are you going to transfer? And so many things about the architecture comes into play when you think about the security and access patterns. And then test and deploy, as I mentioned, like test it in the environment. And uh, and then once you are satisfied with that product, um, then you agree to certain commercial terms and conditions, pricing, and then you get the production access and then boom, you're live. So there is more to it, but uh, this is very simplified way of looking at what is the process involved once um, you have exposed to your product APIs and your clients wants to integrate with your um, product APIs. It's very important to make this process very easy and, and, and seamless for your clients because um, that's where uh, you need to make sure that they are happy and successful in that and not frustrated with the process. So iterating through the process, understanding how um, how uh, they can make it better um, every time is is very important. So this is the last slide that I have. So again, whatever you build with your partners and clients, uh, showcasing it is important. That's how others will learn what you have built and how successful they were by integrating with your product APIs. So we have a partner showcase uh, page on our platform that shows uh, how the financial institutions and fintechs that we work with are using our APIs and how they have, what products they have built and, uh, you know, basically help others learn from, uh, from each other's experience and be able to innovate more ideas and experiences out of it. So it has been an amazing journey. Um, uh, going through this transformation ourselves, and uh, we see that the demand for more digital uh, uh, digital experience in the 
financial space. And then we continue to help our clients uh, learn from what we have learned. And also uh, maybe at some point open up uh, the uh, the APIs around uh, banking and financial services um, and provide it for more uh, partners and collaborators in the ecosystem to participate and build innovative ideas. Um, that's all I have for today. Um, so I think we have some um, time for questions. Back to you, Mehdi. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Sinat. Thank you for explaining all this, uh, all this journey. Uh, one question we have is about the culture. How, because you say that uh, Visa was uh, on, in API since the beginning, right? Uh, how did you keep that culture of it being, I don't know how to say, API-led or API-driven or API-informed, uh, at least, over all these years? How did you entertain and nurture that? Yeah. So initially, for every company, when you're switching from a very siloed product focused to an API focused, um, there is a lot of uh, organizational culture that has to come uh, with it. And uh, to some extent, you know, there's a lot of sponsorship required from the leadership. Like long term, is this what the company is going to stand for? And is it what we need? So uh, it took us some time to get everybody aligned to the strategy and uh, and start thinking from an API standpoint and move away from this old standards to, into a new standard. And over, I think, past two, three years, we see a transformation within the company itself. Now, we don't need to go to each product team and evangelize and say, hey, you know what, can you please open your product and put APIs around it? Oh, you know, I think there was a disconnection. We're re-inviting you on stage right now. And backstage, can you invite Tina, please? Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> there was a cut. I don't know where. Uh, yeah, can can you go back where, where you were? Yeah, so what I was saying is uh, initially, initially uh, getting everybody aligned to an API strategy was important. Right. Uh, for example, when we started off, uh, there were product teams who uh, were on SOAP APIs uh, and when everything had to be standardized and put under the Visa developer platform, uh, naturally there is uh, uh, resistance because uh, you know they have other things to complete uh, in that time frame. But now what we have seen is uh, API, uh, building it as API has become part of that product development culture and we put processes around it so that it it happens and also a lot of sponsorship from the leadership team is required um, and in constant messaging right it will take maybe two three years to uh, get it across a big company like visa and make everybody start thinking about api so um, we have a dedicated team uh, of product managers who help uh, all our uh, product teams to understand about API standards, how to build, uh, think about uh, products, in, you know, uh, from an API standpoint, and also um, a lot of evangelism like hackathons, um, community uh, reach, uh, all those things helps um, our clients wanting to uh, uh, use API. So our clients become aware of APIs and ask for uh, API uh, driven development. Uh, through our sales team, which is amazing transformation that we had. We have a lot of uh, comments in the chat about the focus on customers, like APIs are always linked to, a, at some point, a user or a customer feature needs or whatever from what you say. Uh, uh, what arguments are you using to convince every stakeholder, even the business, the manager, the executives, as you were saying, to always keep APIs which is a technical term that everybody you know, in the industry thinks it's just a technical term and should stay to IT. How do you transform this technical term into business objectives? How, how can you achieve that? Yeah, so, um, so you know, I, I cannot share my sales material in this uh, call. I would have wished to, but, uh, you know, if, if you get a chance to see our sales material, we don't talk about APIs and here is the uh, tag, here is the argument, this is the value. We don't talk about any of that, right? We uh, 
we we educate them about uh, a simple example is like google maps it's there in every website right not everybody is recreating it it's all about api so that's a simple concepts that they get it. they get it and and i'm kind of surprised that you know most of the financial services uh, financial institutions executive team understands apis pretty well and then we start off with experiences like i mentioned like end to end experience we don't talk about api first we talk about experience and say hey do you have a need for this and then based on that experience we say okay here are the apis that you could use to make the experience happen so they get that very high level view and then we help with the low level integration yeah that reminds me of a quote of a banking manager who used to say that api first no customer first then apis for exactly customers. yeah exactly it's a platform for delivering your product right that's that's the difference um, and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's very interesting to see how this transformation is happening in the financial industry yeah maybe well, maybe one last question uh so recently visa acquired played uh I'm, so i'm not asking you a strategic question uh there right no worries uh the, but the thing is do you also see apis as a way to make like you know uh, for example integration of new companies with others uh, uh more uh, more seamless and also to have more agility when you have two external systems that need to talk together Yeah I'm not supposed to talk more about player but um, okay. from just from a technical standpoint uh, both are api oriented platforms so we see a lot of potential in integrating uh, apis Yeah so that was mainly the 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 idea that is that yeah two api driven companies maybe it's easier uh, to uh, to integrate but uh, yeah you have to be part of visa to know to know how how to do it yeah Exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. thank you very much Sina it was really insightful uh great that you opened this uh, this track uh, it was really uh broad and 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 and, and, and plenty full of ideas thank you very much uh, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to join today thank you thank you for being part of this community uh thank you and i will ask uh, the backstage now uh, to see if al sivan is around right so you can uh, uh i can leave now right you can I'll leave uh, thank you very much you can thank still. you thank you bye 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 <laughs>